I'll do. Tom here. Thought I'd bring you another tobacco review this evening. Working through my backlog of blends that I've been meaning to uh, record a actual review of for a while. Something a little bit different. Revisiting um, a series I started a while ago and never actually got that too far into. So, but, eh, it's right, isn't it? I'll eventually, in time, when I've got enough spare time, do playlists. So, we'll all be together anyway. First of all, housekeeping. It's a Polinsky Briar Calabash. Well, Calabash shape, but it's, it doesn't have any kind of uh, Calabash properties. What, well, um. A lovely pipe. And it was very inexpensive. And I bought it from. Um, Tadius Polinski himself via his eBay shop. Um, and I'm not sure why it was so cheap, but I'm not complaining. The only thing I will say about this pipe is the button on the stem is very small, and so if I'm not being careful, it'll it'll drop if I'm clenching. So I've got to remember to keep hold of it. What's for back eh? Well, I thought I'd revisit, like I said, a series that I didn't get too far into, and that's American over-the-counter tobaccos, OTCs if you will, and today's is -da -da, Prince Albert, the hilariously named tobacco. Now, it's probably only hilarious to me because I've got the mind of a 14-year-old. If you don't know what a Prince Albert is, um, either Google it or or ask your weird uncle. <laughs> but yeah, I do like the uh, pouch art. And it comes in a luxury pouch, which supposedly keeps the freshness. Which, I'll be honest, I opened this ages ago and the tobacco is still fresh. But I'm not sure if that's necessarily the pouch or additives, you know. Because the pouch isn't exactly um, airtight. So I do smell shenanigans. I'm pairing this with some Aspel Organic Cider. Yeah, you've inspired me beer beard. I don't drink out of glasses though. It's too posh for me. Let's drink out the original container. Too many hours of my misspent youth drinking illegally down the park as a teenager. But never mind all that. This is a tobacco review. So let's talk about the tobacco. So, it comes in this pouch. I believe you can also get it in a massive drum. And uh, it is ready rubbed, I suppose you'd say. Bit rough cut, maybe. You know, some chunky bits. But I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. It smells incredible in the pouch. So, that kind of uh, hot chocolate smell to it. It smells chocolatey, it smells malty, it smells a little bit molasses -y. It smells tobacco -y, which is of course most important. And the components are, as far as I'm aware, burly. Just burly. So if you don't like burly, maybe give it a miss. But I'm alright with Burley. I like Burleys. They're fun. 
when done correctly they're absolutely fine so it burns cool it keeps a light incredibly well which again I do wonder if that's something to do with a process rather than the actual tobacco I'm just going to shift forward a little bit so the sun doesn't shine in my eyes but yeah you definitely get a sort of cocoa maltiness nutty burliness on the retro helm I know what you're thinking, I'm wearing sunglasses, the sun shouldn't bother me. But it does because it glares on the screen and that bothers me. And I'm thinking about you here. It burns cool. It burns at a good pace. Not fast, you know. Quite slow burning. In the flavour, you get more burly than anything else. You get that woody, nutty, earthy burly. But you do get that kind of hints of cocoa. But in the sort, like I say, in a kind of malty way. Not in a chocolatey way, not in a sweet way, more in kind of like a proper old school hot chocolate that kind of way and it's only a hint anyway but I'll tell you now I can certainly understand why this tobacco has stood the test of time it's very similar to Carter Hall but it's not as sweet because Carter Hall does have that caramel sweetness to it which don't get me wrong I enjoy but I couldn't have it all the time. Where's this? It's a little bit earthier. Now the other USOTC I reviewed before was Velvet, which again is a very very similar blend. Well I have more of a sugary mapley anise kind of flavour to it. Which wasn't unpleasant. But I don't know. I kind of prefer this one. But that's me. It's subjective. Subjective. I prefer this. I think it's a little bit maltier. It's a little bit more savoury. And so that appeals to my sensibilities a little bit more than Carter Hall. How would I rate it? Do you know what? I'd, I'll be honest with you here. If this was the only tobacco you could get, I don't think you'd be doing too bad, to be honest. It's very easy to smoke, any time of the day. It's satisfying. It's um, mild medium. Probably more mild than medium, if I'm honest. It smells inoffensive, tastes inoffensive. Burns cold, burns dry. What more do you want, really? It's a good working blend. I would um, rate it... I'd rate it well, I'd say. It's at least a 4 out of 5 on any given day of the week. Yeah. I'd go with that. I'd say a solid 4 to 4.5 out of 5 any day of the week. And it's got a hilarious name. Google it or ask your weird uncle. So with that, I'll bid you farewell for now. i have another video up with you soon. Um, it's going to be something a little bit different. Um, I hope you'll enjoy it, and until next time, be careful out there, 
and uh, I'm going to learn some jokes to sign off with. But I didn't bother learning one. Oh, go on. I'll give you one. I'll give you one before I go. I went to uh, the video rental shop the other day and I said, I'd like to uh, borrow Batman Forever. And the guy said, no, you got to bring it back tomorrow. Careful out there, everyone. Speak to you soon. Cheers.